hello everyone welcome back so in this video we are going to learn about representation of discrete time signals discrete time signals so if you are first time to my channel please consider subscribing so representation of any digital discrete time signal as we have already learned in a previous video that discrete time signals are again uh, obtained from continuous time signals by the process called as sampling okay so by the process of sampling we are going to have the discrete time signals from continuous time signals okay so generally discrete time signals will look like this suppose minus 2 so this is minus 1 at 0 it is 1 this is 2 and 2 here at instant 1 2 3 okay so if this is your one here so this is the representation of discrete time signal so this is this type of representation or this kind of representation is called as graphical representation so if you represent in the form of graph then on the x axis it is n because x uh, dis discrete time signals are represented by x of n so this is x of n here on y axis and n on x axis and this type of representation is called as graphical representation and we can also represent it with uh, functional representation so functional representation so fun in functional representation we are going to represent this as a function so x of n is equal to 2 for n is equal to minus 2 minus 2 for n is equal to minus 1 and uh, 1 for n is equal to 0 and again it is 2 for uh, n is equal to 1 so I am writing here as 1 and uh, for 2 it is its value is equal to 1 so I am writing here comma 2 and 3 its value is minus 2 so I am writing here so 3 so this kind of representation where you are going to represent the function uh, for different values of n so this representation is called as functional representation of discrete time signals and so this is first and this is second and the third representation is tabular representation so we can also represent the discrete time signal in the form of table so that representation is called as tabular representation that is n and x of n so where n represents the uh, sample interval or time interval and x of n represents its amplitude at that corresponding n okay so if you write for this so minus 2 minus 1 the n values are from minus 2 to 3 uh, sorry minus 2 to 3 0 1 2 and 3 so what is the value of x of n at uh, minus 2 its value is equal to 2 at uh, minus 1 its value is equal to minus 2 at 0 its value is 1 at 1 2 at 2 its value is 1 and at 3 its value is minus 2 so such type of representation where you are going to tabulate the values of n and x of n is called as tabular representation so in tabular representation we are representing in the form of table so this representation is called as tabular representation okay so this is the third representation of discrete time signal and the fourth representation is sequence representation sequence representation so we are going to represent the discrete time signal in the form of sequence that is x of n is equal to so we are writing the values here 2 comma minus 2 
1 2 1 minus 2 so x of n values all these values are going to be written like this and we are going to represent an arrow at the instant n is equal to 0 so in sequence representation we are going to represent an arrow at n is equal to 0 so if you represent an arrow at n is equal to 0 it implies that all the values above this that is beyond this n is equal to 0 or positive values or positive values of n so positive values of n and all the values beyond the, the below this is negative values of n negative values of n so in order to differentiate between positive and negative values of n we are going to represent an arrow at n is equal to 0 okay so this now corresponds to n is equal to minus 1 this corresponds to n is equal to minus 2 this corresponds to n is equal to 1 this corresponds to n is equal to 2 and this corresponds to n is equal to 3 okay such type of representation is called as sequence representation and sequence representation is the most widely used representation for representing the discrete time signals okay so in the coming uh, classes we are going to learn more, more deeply about the representation and the characteristics of different discrete time signals okay